Bitcoin is still consolidating at the 30k level and it has already tested the 29.5k region important support zone for the fourth time. But the question is, will Bitcoin be able to break resistance at the 29.9k level and go to higher prices such as the 30.8k level or are we going to be testing lower support? We're going to be talking about this today and also Chainlink has been making a significant surge to the upside and has already made a 20% surge in just a day. We're going to be talking about whether Chainlink is a buy, where should you be watching for any buy opportunities. We're going to be talking about Ripple and Ethereum as well. So make sure you watch this video to the end. We're uploading most likely daily. Make sure you watch this video to the end, subscribe, and let's get into the analysis. So Bitcoin has been making this consolidation you know construction over here and it has been a little bit scary yeah to be honest it has been a little bit scary we rejected the 30.4k level in nuke down to the 29.5k level for the fourth time and if we were to be going on to the daily chart i mean this does not look good to be honest as you can see over here bitcoin made a huge wick upside wick which is suggesting that selling pressure is enormous at these levels and then we dropped to the 29.5k level yes we did held this as support but as support is hit multiple times it means that the support zone is getting weaker and weaker so this is the fourth time so even if, if we were to be testing it for the fifth time or the sixth time it is more likely for it to drop i mean Break, the, break to the downside. And the area you should be watching for is the 27.2k region. Now, obviously, the 28.8k region, as you can see, it is in a crucial resistance and 28.3k to the 5k region. But, however, if we were to be going on to the monthly time frame, we are able to witness bullish structure over here. As you can see over here on the monthly time frame, even if Bitcoin were to be correcting to the 28.5k level, I mean, we are still in the bullish territory technically yes we are in the bullish territory and also as you can see over here on the 20 weekly moving average we have been you know holding it as support continuously we still do have support at the 28.3k level and don't forget that the 20 20 weekly move the 20 weekly moving average is a monetary function that you know increases weekly by weekly as you can see over here i mean it calculates the past 20 candles and increases consistently. So, I mean, as as the weeks passes on, it means that the 20 weekly moving average is going to be increasing. So this is an area you should be watching really closely. And also, I want you to, I want you guys to go to your trading view chart and open up this Bollinger Band indicator and the weekly. The weekly Bollinger Bands have not pinched this this much. In a while, actually, it has been the last. The last time we pinched so much was in 2019, as you can see over here. Once we pinched and had an expansion, we had an insane move to the upside. And over here, as the weeks passes on, we're going to be pinching and pinching and pinching. And, and it means that a big move, a big move, a huge move is going to be coming to the Bitcoin price action. So whether we go up or down, my take is, my you know my 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 take is up. But yeah, we sh still need to be considering the downside possibility. And also, I want to be showing you this chart over here. As you can see, this you know this trader showed this trader has this kind of idea that Bitcoin is going to be correcting beneath the 25k level. And obviously, it is a possibility. However, given that the fundamentals have been so strong, unless we do see a you know a decline in the Bitcoin ETS from from the SEC. I don't think that Bitcoin is going to be hitting beneath the 25k level. I mean, this is kind of, you know, dubious in my opinion. I do not think that this is a high probability. So that's what I want you to guys to keep in mind. Unless we have a, you know, denial in the spot Bitcoin ETF applications, I think Bitcoin is going to be going to the upside. But what, what the catalyst is for Bitcoin to be going up is obviously... The Bitcoin ETF, spot ETF getting approved. So once we are able to see that, I think we're going to be seeing a significant surge to the upside. However, however, I mean, who knows what's going to be happening next. The FOMC meeting is coming up next week. So I, I'm expecting a you know, consolidation. And also it does look kind of bearish on the 
daily and the on the and the four hourly time frame unless we bounce off the 29.5k level i'm assuming that bitcoin is going to be seeing lower prices and the first one we're going to be watching is the 29.2k level and the 28.8 and the 28.3k level approximately the 28.5k level but still bitcoin is holding support so it means that there's still room for the upside but the bitcoin didn't reject the 20 daily moving average however what i wanted to be showing you on the monthly time frame was the 20 monthly moving average which is the orange line i mean even if we do drop to the 28.5k level this is going to be holding us support and as you can see bitcoin has been rejecting i mean bitcoin has been you know watching this support zone really you know strongly so as you can see bitcoin has been respecting this 20 monthly moving average so i think that there is a low probability for us dropping below but we, we should not be discounting that the possibility of having a correction to the 28.5k region so this is what i want you to have in mind guys so i want to be talking about Chainlink. Chainlink has been making a significant surge to the upside and what are we testing right now is the resistance weekly monthly resistance zone at these levels if Chainlink is able to make a candlestick above this level at the 7.9 dollar level it will mean meaning that Chainlink has finally broken out of this you know long construction more than a year of a you know sideways side i mean sideways range and yeah, I think we're going to be hitting the next target. And the next you know, ma major target is the $9.3 area, which is confluence with the 20 monthly moving average. And also on the weekly time frame, you're clearly able to see that Chainlink broke below this important support zone. And this was like kind of like a fake out. Many people got freaked out over here. And then we, we you know, managed to get above this region. And it was a 65% move in just a couple of weeks so this is quite significant and we're already testing the upper region of the resistance weekly resistance zone and we want to be looking at looking at this more specifically on the daily chart and yes we are able to see that this region is pretty important and Chainlink has managed to make a daily candlestick above this weekly you know monthly important resistance so Chainlink must be breaking the $8.5 area and if we are able to do that the next resistance zone is going to be the $9.3 area however you know we have been you know overly bought in my opinion if i'm if i were if i'm going to be looking at the rsi as you can see on the daily chart we are above above the assembly region but yeah we are continuing this upwards movement and Chainlink has broken above the 20 weekly moving average and it does look pretty bullish given that he has you know tested it on the daily time frame the he has tested the 20 weekly moving average on the daily time frame so the next support zone you want to be watching is the 7.2 region or the 7.7 dollar $7 region so these are the areas you want to be watching for any potential longs if you're thinking of any potential longs i will be targeting the 7.3 dollar region if not the 7.7 .7 dollar region so if you want to be training you know training link i'll be recommending bitkit by the way this is my you know, spot bitcoin position i have been you know showcasing you guys my spot soft bitcoin position today it's in a 400 dollar deficit and I started for 500k, so I'm approximately in a 220k deficit. But I'm, it's a spot, it's a spot trade. So yeah, I, I don't feel much much about you know any you know, price movements in the short term. But yes, I'm personally using chain, not chainlink Bitkit. And the reason why is because as you can see over here, I'm able to get additional trading fees, discounts on my spot and futures. And the reason why is because I have signed up from this special link over here that you can guys access from the description down below. If you sign up from here, you get a 30% discount on all trades and a $5,000 deposit bonus. So make sure you sign up on Bicket if you haven't. This is the best exchange in my opinion. So yeah, make sure you trade on Bicket. If you were to be going to other exchanges, the trading fee is extremely expensive. So yeah, this is one thing to keep note of. So the next one I want to be looking at is Ethereum. Ethereum has been consolidating at these regions. I mean, it has broken below this 19, the 1.9k support zone, and we are currently testing the 1.87k support zone. I mean, this does not look good to be honest. We are making, you know, big wicks to the upside. If Bitcoin were to be dropping below, I think we're going to be hitting this 1.074, 1.7k region, which Ethereum has not tested yet. So this will be a pretty huge drop to the downside. 
up 7% drop to the downside, which is, you know, quite reasonable. But that's the region you want to be watching for any kind of, you know, downwards, you know, support zones. However, you know, if you were to be going on to the monthly, weekly time frame, the stochastic RSI is, you know, facing to the upwards. And also the Bollinger Bands are pinching and we are having the 20 weekly moving average calling to the upside. So we could be finding support at these regions as well. On the daily time frame, it is starting to pinch. Not bad at all. It's not bad. I mean, not bad in terms of the Bollinger Bands, but it could be taking much more time until we see some sort of expansion. So I'm expecting a range bound construction. But yeah, this is the area I want to be launching for any longs for Ethereum. And lastly, let's look at XRP Ripple. Ripple has been surging to the upside, but as we have been saying, Ripple has this, you know, Ripple, you know, was hitting this Bollinger Bands and given that the Bollinger Bands have not, you know, pinched yet, I was saying that Ripple is likely to have a further correction. Yes, we did have this surge to the upside at the $0.85 region. But yeah, we are currently rejecting this resistance zone. And I'm a, I'm expecting for further corrections to the downside. I think we're going to be hitting the 0 0.68 or even lower at the 0 0.63 if Bitcoin were to be dropping below, which is which which does kind of look likely at the current moment. We do have a lot of liquidity beneath the 29.5k region. If Bitcoin were to not be breaking above the 29.9, this would be bearish. So I think I'll be wrapping up the video over here. Thank you so much for tuning in. Make sure you follow me on Twitter if you haven't so because I'm up updating you guys with you know daily content. As you can see, I have been in English subtitles about my Japanese subtitles. So yeah, if you don't know about me, I'm mostly a Japanese you know Bitcoin an an analyzer. So I upload Japanese videos as well. So yeah, make sure you watch, make sure you follow me on Twitter because I'm updating in English and make sure you join the private Discord channel if you haven't. Also sign up my OKX to get a 5% commission rebate on all trades. Buy bit, you get a 30k deposit bonus. So make sure you watch these perks. So thank you so much for watching, guys. See you guys in the next video.